Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for November 2021. Let's take a look at what's new on the layout. And we'll start right here at Banff. The station is finally complete. So to pick right up where we left off last month, I was showing you guys on this first floor. I thought it was way too dark after I got the eaves on it. It wasn't super complicated. I'd already took the artwork I'd already created. And all I did was up the brightness on it and increase the contrast. And I think I've kind of hit it at a spot where it looks right now to my eye. And uh, it looks pretty good. It sure changed a lot from last month if you go back to that video. You know, it was almost black under there. You couldn't really see much of the detail. And now with this redone uh, print, much more clear. And it looks like it matches the second floor and everything where it's slightly shaded but still visible. So a really big noticeable difference there. You can see on the first floor, you can see a lot of the detail. The Going back to last month, I had reprinted the uh, the artwork for the roof again at Staples. Cost me another 20 bucks, but I think it was worth it. This has got a more warm tone to it, more of a brown, kind of like the real thing did. And I also um, shifted the perspective to try and get rid of that view that I have because you're at the ground level the lower shingles down here, you're kind of taking the photo down here looking up. These, fo these shingles always appear bigger than the ones at the top because of perspective because they're actually physically further away. So I used the perspective correction in Corel Draw to actually um, shrink. How did I do it? So the, the image was like this. I stretched it like that basically. The, uh, the lower portions were pushed in and the upper portion was stretched out to try and even out those shingles. It's not perfect and they're still probably too big in uh, to be HO scale, but they're they're almost there and from three feet away it looks perfectly fine. So then it was just a matter of following the photos and getting the shingles going the right direction and cutting out all the different pieces. So again, my paper templates came in handy. I was able to just use those paper templates that I had used to cut the styrene pieces to give me my rough shapes I needed to cut the shingles and I glued them on with a kid's glue stick. Now if we zoom in, you can see the ridge cap detail, which I think is really cool that there's actually, I made a ridge cap just like there's a ridge cap of shingles um, in real life. I made one out of paper, and this is an image my friend Justin actually got for me. He just happened to be in Banff. Okay, I did the same thing, did the force perspective correction, and then used a clone tool to reproduce it over and over and over again, so I could have, the pieces ended up being about 12 inches long, of, and then it was a matter of just Cut them out with the scissors. They're about two millimeters um, wide, and then just kind of infinitely long, and then cut them out as long as you need, and then just glue them on. Same thing. I kind of curved them with my uh, just my fingers, and then glued it on with the kid's glue stick. I'm really happy with the color and the way that roof uh, turned out, especially once I got the ridge cap on there. It looks like awesome. Um, really looks like captures that look of the BAM station, and for whatever reason, I, I'm not even sure why. I don't know enough about roofs but there's these seams these dark lines there's about four seams on each um, roof face and you know the advantage of using a photo of the real thing is that it captured that detail in there and then I was just trying to I was mindful about orientating them so they match so you can see how that whatever reason that gap is there it comes it follows it around on the next side too which is kinda of how the real real thing is so it's cool to capture those little kind of minute details but when you see them on the real thing and they're quite prominent because you can see those lines stretch along the whole station um, when you see them on there it just kind of tricks your your eye into thinking it's real so obviously both chimneys are installed now uh, this one was hand painted and then I just kind of did a ridge of styrene around the edge this one is using photographs of the masonry from the real thing and then just cut to size and then you can see way at the far end, I noticed on a picture that there's actually like a black sewer vent down at that end. So I uh, put that on there too, just one another tiny detail. But So the station's at, to, at a point now where I'm just going to call it. I honestly, I don't think there's anything else I'm going to do to it. I'm very glad that this is the largest structure I will be building for the entire CN or CP side of this layout. Um, this is by far the biggest building. The, the Jasper station is taller, but it's not nearly as long, which would, which makes it easier to work with. And Lake Louise is like half the size of this one. So largest building on the layout, done, complete. I'm taking that box off and I'm moving on to the next thing. So before we head to the next spot in the layout, I'll just show you the progression of me lightening up the artwork on this. So this is the original. 
I had like artificially shaded this. And then when you went and actually had the little physical, you know, inch and a half awning that this HO scale station have, that made it really dark and almost black. So I had to really brighten that up so you can see my, the progression. So that's the original. That was take two, I think, in the middle there. And then you can see this is the final. That's how bright it ended up being. So I had to brighten it up a lot to overcome that actual shadow that the awning casts. So I also saved some pictures of the roof artwork to show you guys. This was the first print and uh, this was based off, off an actual photo I had taken and for whatever reason in that photo it appeared just super gray and blue and really cold and uh, I just it looked wrong when I went and tested it on there so this was the here's the difference um, you can see really changed that color and just using the photo editor in Corel Draw um, used the, that to adjust the tone and warmed it up and gave it more of that brown kind of cedar shake color. Still lots of gray in there, but it, it just looks more right to me, a little bit warmer and looks more like wood, I think, whereas this kind of looks like asphalt shingles maybe. So that's the difference between those two. So this is Ridgecap Rev 1, my first try at it, and uh, you can see it's the same gray color as the first print of the roof. And so what it is, it's a it's basically like that you're kind of like looking up at the roof it's a photo I took like near where the greyhounds used to park at the station and it's un unaltered and you can see the ridge cap at the bottom you see how big the shingles are but you see as we get further and further up they get smaller and smaller because you're looking at it like this it's kind of like looking up and away from you so here's Rev 2 this is the photo that Justin took from straight on for me and uh, shout out to Justin thank you for doing that man that really helped me out so this is a photo from straight on and then I use that perspective correction to fix it so that all the shingles are the same size going up. And then the clone tool, and then you can have as much ridge cap as you want. You see it just keeps going on endlessly. So I printed that off in between the roof shingle sections. And uh, here's what one last piece of roof cap that I didn't end up using. This is what it looks like when I cut it out. And then you just use your fingers to kind of put a little, little bit of a bend to it like this. And then that just glue, was glued right over top of the two pieces and it nicely covered up the seam just like the real thing. So you can't even tell that there's two paper seams there because this thing covers it up. I did do a little bit of individual shingling so I cut some out. There are some places around the balcony I'll show you after this but that needed um, maybe a little bit like they had a bit of a gap so I cut out individual paper sh cedar shingles and one by one glued them on with CA glue to make a just to cover up the gap so there's a few spots on the roof where I did that but I didn't do too too much of it because you could be there all day you know these these are like one millimeter by four um, basically in HO scale so they are tiny so we're zoomed way in here uh, looking at the balcony on the second floor that overlooks the track side and when I cut this out there's a bit of a gap there and you could kind of see some white styrene so what I did was just cut out those individual shingles and just went and made a little um, roll with them kind of curving as just like the prototype when you look up the photos they kind of did the same thing because it's it's hard to cut cedar shakes uh, exactly as you need and then for water repelling too you got to have another row there that's sitting over top to cover that uh, that joint so just like the real thing we've got the curved individual cedar shingles there on the second floor of the operators living quarters Just walking over to the next bit of progress, I spotted this. Can you see it? Look a little closer. My four-year-old got a hold of the Woodland Scenic Deer and she's been having a blast playing with them and putting them everywhere. I don't even know where four of them are. I know where these... The guy jumping fell down here. A little buck jumping over a fence. And then... Uh, this buck ended up in a tree and I don't know where the other ones are I guess it'll be like a Easter egg hunt keep your eye out for them so now that the station's done there at Banff that wall is pretty much done now up to coming around the corner here so I had to decide what I want to do next um, I could start over where the train is disappearing there at Divide and work that way all the scenery stuff's over there so I could do that but I thought I want to start working on the next wall that I can work on a photo backdrop for. So I'm gonna start the artwork for Morant's Curve here. And I do have some like fantastic pictures to make a backdrop for this. I think this backdrop's gonna be, out of all the photos I took, the, the best ones I have, the most blue sky 
with snow-capped mountains looking amazing, like in the morning, was at Murat's Curve. So I've got some amazing photos to work with. I should be able to make like a really awesome photo backdrop for this. And taking what I learned from Banff backdrop, I think I can make this one better. I think there was some mistakes I made on the Banff one that I could have done better. And I'm gonna take those lessons learned and turn it into this one. And I'm hoping it'll turn out to be like just an awesome scene here at Morant's Curve. So uh, in the meantime, I thought I could go ahead and get the river painted because that's one thing you can do ahead of time. So I removed the island of trees. It's this huge piece of four inch styrofoam. It's not attached, I did that on purpose so that I can work on it off the layout because from here in, that's almost a six, seven foot scene there to, from the front of the layout to the backdrop. So I can actually move these two pieces of styrofoam and I can pop up in there. So that's gonna be one way that I um, scenic this river and get that all done. Then I will uh, scenic the tree island off the layout um, where I can access it, just got it on, sitting on a table over here. Then I can plunk that thing down in there. Then I can finish working on the uh, exterior of this scene from the aisle. So it's kind of like a three-step process to do this one. And one of the first things I needed to do was seal up the holes. So I went back to my tried and true method of uh, filling holes and, and cracks and stuff with the, uh, the great stuff, foam. I use this for so many things on this layout. Um, I use it to glue the foam pieces together. I use it to glue things in place for scenery. And I also use it to fill up the holes like all over the place. This stuff just works really good and it's solid. Um, I found that it leaves a bit to be desired in the in this kind of a scenario because I need this to be almost the same texture as the plywood. The way I'm going to do the river is the same way I did the 40 mile creek. I'm going to paint it, get it painted the colors I want it to be, and then pour resin over it. And then that uh, the resin gives it the shininess and makes it look like water. But you gotta have your, this has to be really nice underneath. It's gotta look the part. So I can't have these cracks here. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is come back, sand these and uh, fill them with drywall mud. But they are, at least they're filled now all the way through. So I'll give them a quick sand with my vibratory sander and then uh, use just drywall compound, I think, on them to fill them up. Then I'll repaint this. So speaking of the island for the Murat's curve scene, that's it right there. Uh, it's like a five by three and a half foot piece of four inch styrofoam that's all shaved to be the right kind of angle and kind of give that impression of a tree island that's uh, in that scene. And so the Bow River snakes around the outside of that, comes all the way around in my version of it. So that thing, I will be able to work on it off the layout. I'm probably gonna keep it right there. I'll probably just put some plastic sheeting over the crew lounge table there so I don't uh, mess it up with any scenery stuff and then I'll be able to just work directly on that thing so this is where we'll leave it guys. I just heard a whistle at Lake Louise. So we're gonna get an eastbound here in a few minutes. I think it's worth our while to just hang out and wait. Watch that guy go by. As always, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.